So I'm going to do the weekly tarot reading. Now, this one, obviously, it's Halloween. It is still for me. Now, maybe it's November 1st for you guys. But what I want to go ahead and focus on, there's a lot coming up. Obviously, we have, we're in the blue moon. And then the Mercury retrograde is going to end on election. That's going to be a big day, obviously. But what does spirit really want the spiritualists to kind of know and focus on? To kind of prepare themselves. Because some big changes are coming. We can kind of brace ourselves. We know... Some things are going to happen. We know we're going to have the election. We kind of got an idea who's going to win. We kind of have an idea. Some things may go to the Supreme Court. What's going on? I'm going to go ahead and let that rest. And we're just going to kind of talk about what does spirit want us spiritualists, light people to know during this time. But the funny thing is I'm going to use the Dark Mansion deck for it because it's a nice Halloween kind of deck. It's not exactly Halloween, but it's, you know, it's it's good for the day. So let's go ahead and read this one. And I've got incense burning, and hopefully I can breathe while doing this. And I really don't want to talk about politics, Spirit. I was just trying to do a read, and it started coming up. I'm getting my Trump cards. I'm getting Florida, and I'm getting all this stuff. And I'm like, Spirit, I don't want to talk about it. I'm like, give me something else. Give me something, you know, a message for the light people. That's what I want to focus on. I've done plenty of those. That's what I want to focus on. I think because I hadn't set a question, that's why it was coming up. And I feel like everybody kind of needs a break. <coughs> I knew I was going to cough on that incense. But it's kind of a good thing because I started, I was beginning to read, and then the cat started using the cat box, and you can hear the scratching. So I'm like, that's really attractive. So um, I'm kind of glad I scrapped that one. And that's probably not good for the energy of what I'm trying to do. But when you have a house with four cats, it's really unavoidable. This is, this is my life. I'm just a crazy cat lady. But yes, let's focus on what does spirit want the light people to focus on themselves. Okay, what a spirit want us to know. So I do have the magician. So one of the things definitely we want to work on full moon, work on your manifestation, but really kind of think about what do I really want to manifest? What do I want to create? But also know that you do have the power. This is a magical time. Embrace it. And I would say even, you know, as the moon begins to wane, you still got days that you could kind of work on that. So use this time to really set your intent. Now, I know I talked about a lot about the LOA and giving and so forth and how that is. But manifestation, of course, does work as well with setting intent. We just want to have a pure intent is what I, you know, I can we get it that pure? I understand. It's never going to be perfectly pure. But as uh, I guess the best way to say is as pure as possible in alignment with spirit, set your intent with your manifestation. This is what we really want to work on. And Ten of Wands is not a surprise to see that. One of the things we're going to do during this full moon is really look at what we can release, what we can drop, what we can let go of. So we really want to focus. If we're going to be able to manifest and send anything to the universe, well, if something is weighing us down, how are we going to get it to spring outward, right? So look at what you need to kind of release and just, you know, send away, you know, let go of and so forth. That is very important to do that. Now, I've got the Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups especially can be about illusions and it also can be about the veil because this is Neptune. Neptune is the keeper of the veil. So obviously during this day, the veil is not there. So that is really what the Seven of Cups in the reverse position is saying in particular this time is there is no veil. So the spirits are all around us. 
if you have any kind of wild activity, do not be surprised. I know yesterday I was getting a lot of angel numbers. I went to lunch. My lunch came up to 888. I went to the store. I bought a little thing of potato salad. It cost $5.55. My total at the grocery store was $25.55. So it was crazy. It was a whole lot of angel things were popping up right before today. But yes, the veil is ripped down. Neptune is in charge of the veil. You just remember that, you astrology people and stuff. And it's parted. It's gone. It's out of the way until it goes back up for another time. But yes, the spirits are here with us. Ah, and it's a Halloween read, right? As I'm talking about the spirits, I got the seven of swords. So watch out for the pesky ones, okay? Be careful during this time. Use your protection. Don't necessarily... <clears throat> And don't necessarily think that you are so protected that you won't get a visitation. You know, hey, I'm an expert and I'm good at banishing and all that. Just, you know, you use your protection. Use some common sense. I know there was a recommendation if you're um, on Facebook and you know me there. Aisha Sheba was saying do not charge your crystals in this moonlight. I agree with that. Um, one of the things is entities could attach to the crystals during this time since there is no veil, okay? So that is one of the things, you know, hey, there's all kind of stuff running amok right now. So be really careful with that. I am not charging mine. Um, I, I just personally, I'm not going to do that. I don't always charge my crystals. It's not necessarily a thing I always do. Um, save it for the next moon. And then, um, yeah, four of cups is kind of funny. See, he's kind of ignoring that cup. Um, so don't ignore that advice, okay? I was seeing some people that were kind of ignoring certain advice and so forth. You know, and just like when they're hearing, you know, use protection, this, that, you know, dot all your I's and cross your T's during this time. You know, pull all the stops, you know, have your protection. You want to set your intent and do your magic, absolutely. Do that light people, do that witches, do that pagans, whatever you want to do. You know, I'm not a fluffy or anything like that, but just, you know, be cautious. And, you know, sometimes we got to kind of follow the rules, uh, you know, a little bit just to keep everything safe and so forth. And I do love the Empress. You know, we have the Empress, this is Venus and so forth. So we were talking about manifesting, you know, she is definitely about abundance and everything like that. So I feel like a lot of you, if you do a nice manifestation, now, like I said, line it up with spirit. You know, we want to be in alignment. You know, we don't, don't want to go against the grain if we can help it. You should be able to attract the abundance that you need that you are looking for. So that's very good. Now, I look at the Eight of Pentacles in the reverse position. This is kind of a message of spirit. I have been noticing, I have been... Uh, getting this a little bit for some people. But right now, as we're kind of doing our work and working on our manifestation and so forth, sometimes people, um, we do want to follow the rules, like I said, but sometimes people are sticking to what they know. Like, you know, one of the things to understand is this is a blue moon. This is very different. So it's important to not just do this like any old full moon. This is a unique one. This has not happened in 76 years where a full moon fell on Halloween. Think about that, okay? I have not even, this is the first time for me, okay, that Halloween had a full, a blue moon, excuse me, a blue moon. And so this is a very unique one. So we're not going to do things the same old way. Like the Eight of Pentacles is about doing the same thing over and over in mastery. We need to do something different. So think of something in your, like your rituals and so forth with the blue moon what is something unique that you could do that maybe you did not do before in some kind of manifestation or some kind of releasing i want you to think just what can i do different you know i, I usually do this on a full moon but this is very unique what is what is unique about it meditate on that and do something different so then i have the sun how funny we're talking about the moon and everything but, you know, tomorrow comes on the new day. This is kind of lead into the week. I do like the fact this is hopeful. This is a happy time. So I'm hoping we can have some happy news, maybe. Um, you know, some joyful news and so forth. Now, one of the things on the card, which is a little bit different, I just noticed. It says, 
voyage and travel, and then it says something about impossible. It's like it has some kind of writing on it. I'm, I'm, it's kind of hard to see it all, but I look at that kind of impossible, and um, I wish, let me see if I could show, if you really kind of look at the words, you might need to be on a computer. The app is going to be hard, but I look at that word impossible, and I feel like Spirit is saying you can do the impossible with this moon. What would seem impossible maybe is not as impossible as you think. So, and kind of look into that and so forth. That is very positive. So then I've got the King of Wands in the reverse position. Now, the King of Wands, he's very good with that wand. Obviously, like a magician. We've got the magician here. So I feel like the reason why it's reversed is, do yes, do like the magician. You know, we're going to go ahead and work on the manifestation. You're going to wave the wand and all that. Absolutely. But just be careful with setting the intent. Be careful how you wield it. Because it's going to be intense. It's going to be intense. What you put out is really going to hit. And then I've gotten the hopes and fears. I've got the Nine of Pentacles. So I feel like this is a hopes. As you can kind of see, she's just surrounded by abundance. Everything is going good. Life is good. So many of us just want that right now, don't we? You know, 2020 has been a tough year. And we would just kind of like to get back to that. Enjoying life and so forth. Just all our self-love and and our sense of self-worth and our self-confidence. Get all that back and get to feeling good and so forth. So I would say, why not? You know, why not? That's on the way and so forth. Okay, so one of the cards in the outcome I pulled to, I've got the Eight of Swords in the reverse position. So this is especially, this moon is very important to kind of break free out of that mental prison that you've been in and to realize, remember what I was talking about, hey, you know, things that seemed impossible are possible during this mood. So really to kind of, you know, break free of certain restrictions that your mind has put you on and kind of look at where do I want to be free? What do I most want during this time? Even though this is the Eight of Swords and it looks like she's trapped, notice she wears red. That's power in tarot. When you see them wearing red, that's power. To show that the power is within her. And then the Wheel of Fortune is right next to her. So, you know, some of you are going to win big on your manifestation. You're going to do very well. You're going to do very positively. Okay, I'm going to pull some Oracle cards. But it's very positive. Manifest. But watch out for the spirits, okay? Seven of Swords is my sneaky guy. And I know some of you are going to be like, oh... I don't need that. I don't need to hear about it. I'm not afraid. Just be cautious. Just be cautious. I'm not going to preach to you. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. But um, just, you know, just, it's a serious, it, it, it's Halloween and a blue moon, man. You know, this is some serious, magical, you know, Neptune, rip the veil. It's gone for the night. So we want to be, we want to be careful during this time. I'm actually going to draw from Ask the Guides. I'm going to do a little different this time for the Oracle. I mean, I could do Moonology. Do I have it nearby me? Probably not. No, let's just do Ask the Guides. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm feeling Ask the Guides. I have been getting that card a lot. I feel like Spirit's trying to end that one too. It is so bizarre. I'm trying to talk to people. Come on, Spirit, but they're right. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like um, one of the things when I was talking about um, the King of Wands in the first position, be careful with the wand, but he is a leader. For some of you, I've got the leadership card. Some of my light people, you're meant to get out there and lead and so forth. And I've also got the business card. I've been seeing this a lot for people. And I feel like the reason why I keep drawing these cards is spirit really wants the light people to realize that they, they want them to take the lead. Don't be a follower during this time. You know, and that is one of the things about, you know, the light path and light work. When you get on this path, you kind of do become your own leader. You're not necessarily leaning on a group for anything. You're really kind of taking the lead and taking charge of your own path and you're making it your own. So remember, you're your own leader, but especially about business. Some of you, some of you may be considering even, you know, with your spirituality and so forth, going into business going to do that Reiki, going to do readings or various things like that. Spirit is definitely saying work on manifesting that so you can begin that. So if some of you have been considering doing something like that, 
I know I'm getting it for some people. Spirit is really up the ante that they want people out there giving the messages of spirit and getting the healings. But that should be, you know, your confirmation of that. And then I've also got the life force Aphrodite. So especially, you know, expect that. It's going to be fierce. It's going to be fierce during this time. So yeah, just, just use some precaution. Um, you know, tonight and everything, just remember the veil is thin. You may have some wild dreams. I know some are coming in the group talking about their dreams are really intense. You know, that's something that I have noticed. I've had some people come to me about, you know, various dreams they're having. I know in my mentor group, I'm getting that especially, um, you know what? I do want to pull that moonology. I'm real curious what it's going to say. Hold on. I got it. Let me go get it. Okay. Yeah, I'll pull moonology for you guys because I'm curious. If I pull the blue moon card, I'd freak out. I doubt I'm going to. Well, it is a blue moon, but it says full moon in Cancer, but it is blue. And it says a personal issue reaches resolution, but it's blue. <sighs> I Something told me to pull from this deck. A personal issue reaches resolution. So for some of you, if you're having any kind of issues with some people, any kind of conflict, that should be resolved. But it's blue. Isn't that wild? That's awesome. And, and I did not rig that. Okay, you saw me draw it out of this deck. And then I also drew the card, You Are Good Enough. Another full moon card, um, You Are Good Enough. So just remember that that's a little bit of the Nine of Pentacles spirit. You know, she's comfortable in her own skin and she's happy. But if any of you feel like, you know, we always are a work in progress, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. I am always trying to work on myself and learn lessons. But don't beat yourself up. Just remember, you are good enough. And then I also have the card, Nothing yet is set in stone. Now, I'm kind of relieved to see that. Um, you know, I know we're, you know, the election, I'm trying not to talk about it too much, but it's coming up. A lot of people are on pins and needles. Um, we kind of, you know, a lot of us have a feeling the way it's going to go, but it's still very fluid, you know, because it's really up to the people is what it comes down to. You know, if people get out there and everybody votes and all that stuff, you know, that ultimately is what is really going to determine it. And so, um, but will somebody mess with the system? That's, see, that's the thing us tarot readers are kind of concerned. But I'm going to hold off on, on that. I'm going to keep that thought to myself for a little bit. But it's very positive. I love the magician, you guys. I love I pulled the blue moon. It, it's not the blue moon card, but it is a blue moon in the card. So I'll take it. I'll take it. That's awesome that I drew that. I knew I had to get that deck. So, um... But um, just, you know, be careful with the spirits, <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid of them. Um, I've dealt with spirits. I've, you know, I've, I've kind of joked before, and it, but it's true. I did my first banishing at 11 where uh, I uh, stupidly with friends played with a Ouija board. And um, I was very fascinated by it, to be honest. I, I wasn't really afraid of the spirits at all or anything. I thought it was cool, you know, because I'm 11 years old and I thought I thought it was cool. But then I told one of my Catholic friends what I did, and I sold the Ouija board in my house. And it was a handmade one, by the way. We just made it. We made it with the back of a game board and a mayonnaise jar. And um, she was she then she started freaking me out. Oh my God! That said the devil. What have you done? Are you crazy? You gotta banish it. You gotta get rid of it and stuff. And I'm like, what do I do? She's like, read the Bible. So. You know, I'm 11 years old and I don't even understand. I had a Bible because I went to Sunday school. So I go in the room, open the Bible and I start reading Genesis. It's all I knew how to do. I didn't know what to do and I just read for a while. And then I stopped when I felt it was good. The air seemed change. Never had a problem. You know, so that was my first banishing. Pretty simple stuff. Um, I dealt with a lot harder later on. But, um, you know, as far as like drudging up, you know, or making mistakes. Yeah, I've done that too. <laughs> I've done that too. Um, you know, but that's sometimes that's how you learn. Sometimes how you learn is trial by error, you know, or should I say trial by fire? Hope you guys enjoy your full moon.